Well, hello and happy Thursday, New Life fam. My name is Dan Levy. I'm a pastor on staff here at New Life Church. And today I get the opportunity to open up God's word with you. Over the course of this week, different members from our pastoral team have leaned into the attribute of peace and the reality that God wants us to walk and to receive more of his peace in our lives. Today, we are going to be continuing in this theme of peace. And today, I want to start with a quote that I'm sure you've heard at one point or another in your life. And it says this, the hard times in life will always reveal your true friends. The big thought behind this idea, this line, this quote is that in life, there are people that will walk with us in good times when life is easy, when situations are simple. But if a person who walks with you in the easy times, all of a sudden stops walking with you when it's difficult, when it's trying, when it's tough, when it's stressful, well, that isn't really the mark of a true friend because you need that person in that time. And in Philippians chapter four, verses six to seven, the apostle Paul would talk about the attribute of peace. In fact, the peace of God. And the peace of God isn't available to you and to me just when life is easy or simple or good, but rather in the most difficult and trying and stressful of circumstances. In fact, God wants us to know that he wants his peace to be a continual and constant companion for all seasons, all situations in the journey of life. And that's really good news today. To unpack this thought, we're going to be looking at Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 7. And in this passage of scripture, Paul really gives us the secret in how to access God's peace for our lives. This is what he says. Do not be anxious about anything. In fact, if you're reading from your Bible today, I would encourage you to circle that word anything in your Bible. He continues on and he says, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And here's where the great exchange takes place. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. In fact, even before we, we say any thoughts about this passage, I want to encourage you just to invite God's presence by saying, Jesus, I want to invite your peace into my life today. A couple observations from this passage of scripture. First thing I want to highlight is the situation or the setting. You see, in this passage, Paul is writing from prison to a church that's experiencing both persecution and poverty. You know, in, in this passage, we would see that for both parties, there was actually plenty to be anxious about in their lives. And recognizing that there was so much to be anxious about for the church at Macedonia, the church at Philippi, the apostle Paul is saying, hey, I recognize this, but hear me out. Don't be anxious about it. Don't be anxious about anything from small things to big things to things in between. Continuing on, a second note that I want to make is the phrase, every situation. Paul is saying this, in every situation of life that causes anxiety, that causes fear, it is actually an invitation to come and bring your fear, to bring our anxiety to Jesus, to Jesus. We shouldn't sit in our anxiety. No, we need to bring it to him. The third thing is the result. When we bring our anxieties to Jesus in prayer, petition, with thanksgiving, there's a great exchange that takes place. And Paul says this, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I want to highlight the word guard here. You know, in this passage, the word guard is actually a military term in the Greek that has to refer to a person standing guard, protecting something. Listen to what Paul's saying here. The peace of God is not fragile. It's not only when times are good. It can withstand the storms of life. And Paul is saying that God wants his peace to stand guard, protecting your heart and your mind. Powerful. A couple application points for your life and my life today. The, main, the first thing I want to highlight is, is this, is that we got to do the right thing with our anxiety. When anxiety comes, it can be easy to just walk with anxiety, to stuff anxiety down, or maybe even to pour out anxiety or operate out of anxiety to the people in our lives. Yet in this passage, Paul is essentially saying, you got to do the right thing with your anxiety. You got to bring your anxiety to Jesus. Don't just sit in your anxiety. No, bring it to Jesus. In fact, that's where our anxiety 
is dealt with. I actually believe that when we experience anxiety, it's actually our body's way of communicating. It's our soul's way of communicating. Hey, it's time to pray. It's time to run to the Lord in prayer in our lives. You know, we have an alarm clock on our phones. What if anxiety is actually the alarm saying, hey, it's time to wake up and pray. And so today I would encourage you to receive anxiety, not uh, don't receive anxiety, but to receive it as an invitation to go to the Lord, to bring to Jesus. First Peter 5, 7, the apostle Peter would say this, cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. You know, I think a lot of times anxiety arises in our lives when we are actually carrying something that we ought to be casting upon the Lord. Maybe we're carrying something about finance, the kids, that relationship, jobs, uh, COVID, health, whatever it is, cast it upon Jesus and a great exchange takes place. Present it to God and something better comes in return. The second thing I wanna highlight is the result, which is the return. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You know, I recognize that all of us have encountered anxious moments in this season of life, but God wants to mark our lives with his peace no matter the circumstances. But here's the key, we have to run to Jesus. And when we run to Jesus, we get something far greater in return, there's a great exchange. We give him the things that stress us out and he gives us his incredible peace. What a deal. That's an awesome deal right there. And today I wanna to encourage you, God wants his peace for your life. In fact, I believe that there are people listening in today that just need to cast their cares upon Jesus. Maybe you've thought through it. Maybe you've tried to figure it out. Maybe you've thought through plan A, plan B, plan C, contingencies, but God actually just wants you to bring it to him. And when you bring it to him, He's gonna give you a profound peace that you couldn't muster up in your own strength or in your own thinking. And it will actually be a guard over your heart and your mind in Jesus. Good news today, church. We might walk in anxiety, but God wants to take our anxiety away and give us his peace so that we can walk in that instead. Let's pray. Father, we come before you in Jesus' name and we thank you for your outstanding peace. And I pray God over each and every listener, that you would grant to them the peace that surpasses all understanding and that it would stand guard over hearts and minds today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. We love you, church. God bless you.